Good evening, I'm Chief Meteorologist John Ed Thompson. We have a perfect night on the way. Skies are clear, temperatures are dropping, and so is the humidity. Your forecast is coming on Fox 10 News at 9 p.m. Expected a few more clouds, a little bit more rain today because that frontal system was not supposed to move through. The only place clear was down south. After 32 years, it's the end of an era for Fox 10 News and the weatherman you've come to know and love. We'll take a look back at John Ed's career, his final day on the air, and some of the lives he's touched over the years. You're watching Fox 10 News at 9 p.m. John Ed, a lot of people on the Gulf Coast, Baldwin and Mobile County, have depended on you for years and years. I just want to tell you thank you for the great job you've done, and I hope you enjoy playing golf in your retirement. <laughs> It's the end of an era here tonight on Fox 10 News. It's the last newscast for our longtime chief meteorologist, John Ed Thompson. Hello, everyone. I'm Lenny Slagon. My colleague Bob Grip has the night off. Well, here we are. We finally made it to the day. After 32 years, you decided to retire. And today's your last day. Took me three hours to clean out my desk. I know. That's what you've been doing since we got off the air at 5 o'clock. I found tides from 1974. <laughs> <laughs> so are you sure you still want to go through with it? Uh, well, I told Jason I might uh, be back next week, so he's decided to take another week off. Hmm. Actually, Jason's uh, at a wedding tonight. All right. He's already married. He's at a wedding tonight. So the desk is cleaned out. The news. Uh, I wouldn't call it cleaned out. I wouldn't call it cleaned out. <laughs> it's it's somewhat emptied. Yeah, Jason, bring a mop or something. You're going to have to clean it up. <laughs> All right, John Ed. Well, you know, if you do something for as long as you do something, I should say, that you love, as long as John Ed has done, you fall into a routine. It's a routine that he has followed for more than three decades with a single purpose, and that's to tell you about the weather. So what's a day like in the life of John Ed Thompson? Hmm? Chastity Bird did some digging to find out. This is Chastity Bird, and I'm outside the place where Mr. John Ed Thompson comes every day. I'm outside of the Fox 10 News Studios, and today we're going to be the paparazzi, actually the stalkerazzi. I've got photographer Ricardo Montgomery. I've got photographer Jason Caldwell, and we are going to show you a day in the life of Mr. John Ed Thompson. Ricardo and Jason catch our favorite weatherman as soon as he pulls up. Well, let's see here. Tonight I turn into a pumpkin about 10.03, but they've called me a bumpkin since I was 23. Anyway. <laughs> but that's not all the store had to say. I've got to turn in everything or they'll dock my paycheck. After Mr. Thompson left his car, he still shouted things to our camera. This is what I look without uh, my makeup. I'll, I'll look about five years younger in about three minutes. <laughs> After some time and some makeup, we caught up with John Ed again, getting ready for the 5 p.m. show. He did weather flawlessly, as always. He even had some time to greet his fans and co-workers for autographs and pictures. It's clear that this man is special to many. John Ed even had time for a quick interview. I thought the show went pretty good. It had too much of me in it. <laughs> but he's not done yet. One more show on his final day at Fox 10. I don't know if I got another show left in me. You know, when you, you know, like when your car, it's, it's warranty's about to run out. I feel like my warranty's almost run out, and I don't know if I can do another show. So who's going to do the show tomorrow? <laughs> you. Ch Chastity. Chastity's going to do the show. Uh, don't worry, guys. He's just joking. But I did get him to be serious just for a second about all the friends and fans that have supported him. Yeah, it's wild. It really is. I, I mean, I don't deserve it. You know, really? You know, I don't feel that way. I don't feel like I deserve it. But I'll take it, you know. And when asked if he was going to do anything special for the 9 p.m. show. Uh, I was planning to maybe go topless. <laughs> Jet, you knew he had to go out with a joke, and that's what we all love. You, John Ed Thompson, not only for being our weatherman, but for just being you. 
We love you and we'll miss you. From the Fox 10 News Studios, I'm Chastity Bird. <laughs> Too funny. Great stuff there, Chastity. Well, you know, it's impossible to sum up John Ed's career along the Gulf Coast. Again, it's a career that has lasted more than three decades. Over that time, he has touched a lot of people. Fox 10 News anchor Bob Grip has more now on the life and times of John Ed. A lot has changed in the 34 years since I first met John Ed Thompson here at the TV station that used to stand at the corner of St. Louis and Conception Street in downtown Mobile. But one thing, especially about John Ed, has always remained constant. John Ed is always ultimately himself. And he's somebody we all like. He's just like us. He never puts himself above us. He's right there with us. And he always comes from that side door with something you're not expecting. When God made John Ed, they only made one of a kind. As you know, Bob, in this business, people don't stay around in one place for that long of a time. And, and John Ed is just an institution and a legend here and certainly somebody we're awfully proud of. In 1979, John Ed spent hours on the air, keeping you company from our transmitter site in Baldwin County after Hurricane Frederick caused the power to fail in downtown Mobile. Then for one tropical storm or hurricane after another one, more than I can count, John Ed was your constant companion and friend during the worst of every storm and the recovery that followed. He has a personality that uh, stays calm during times of uh, sheer terror for some people. One of the things I've tried to tell myself is uh, never overly excite someone. You don't want people to be afraid. You want them to be reassured and if they need to take action, that's what you need to tell them. He is a good guy. Uh, he doesn't put on any airs about him. What you see on the air is what you get, and I think that is probably the key to, to his success over the years, no doubt. Mine, well, it was right here. It was built back in 1977. He even kept serving you after finding out that Hurricane Katrina washed away the home he loved on Dauphin Island. He's the only meteorologist to win the Press Register's Reader's Choice Award every year it's been offered. He's also a winner of the Mobile Press Club's John Harris Achievement Award, the organization's highest honor. Bye, John Ed. Happy retirement. We'll miss you. John Ed, we wish you a great time. Good luck in retirement, John Ed. I think the greatest tribute to John Ed comes from all of you who tuned in day after day and year after year because John Ed became a member of your extended family. You can't ask for a better compliment than that. Well, if I'd known I was going to get this kind of attention, I would have done it years ago. <laughs> Thank you, John Ed. John Ed's fans, we want to hear. Thank him for all his years. How are you going to manage to stay away from all of this? I think I can, I can do that. I believe I can. <laughs> John Ed, John Ed, what's the weather going to be? I'm off duty. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's it. Hey, John Ed, just wanted to wish you goodbye. I wish I could be there in person, but as you know, Bree and I had this 35th wedding anniversary trip set up before we knew that you were going to retire. Otherwise, we'd be right there with you. We're sure going to miss you, and we know you're not going to be a stranger. So take care, John Ed. Best of luck. And you know, hundreds of you have been able to tell John Ed goodbye in person. Last month, we held four farewell forecasts and gave you the opportunity to wish John Ed a happy retirement. And we had some great turnouts, okay? From Gulf Shores to Atmore to Pensacola Beach to downtown Mobile. John Ed fans from all walks of life came out to say good luck. This legend has stood through the storm and been a friend of mine. Fog and Mardi Gras, he's known throughout this town. What will the weather do when it don't have John Ed? Will it just give up the fight? Was it something that it said? What will become of all the clouds up overhead? What will the weather do when it don't have John Ed? He's gotten us through a lot of bad.
had problems. If you hear that nice, common voice in the background, it's almost like an uncle watching out for you. We just love him, and we're going to miss him. And that's the only weatherman I watch. Hey, we love John Ed. John Ed's talented. It's, it's, he's one of those people that has so many different skills and abilities. get in the honeydew club. Honey, can you do this and honey, can you do that? So that's what he's going home to do. Just to get to know the man himself is just it's a highlight of my life. John Ed, Wait enjoy on. your retirement. Happy retirement, John Ed. We're going to miss you. I know you're going to enjoy it. Oh, what some great times yeah. you had out there. And I remember that Pensacola send-off. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of folks come out and yeah. say, good luck. And some people didn't get there in time to say good luck. No, but they still got their messages in. <laughs> because I left too quickly. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I, I think I can hit Pensacola Viso in the next couple of days. Yeah, I guess so. You've May got all this time. So what are you going to do? Maybe Destin, Pensacola uh -huh. Beach, Biloxi, Las Vegas. Uh, well, you deserve the time <laughs> off after 32 years that you have served so well here. Yeah, I'm going to come back and give the forecast a little later on. Okay? I hope so, because we still Am have a newscast here. I believe so, really? young man, yes. Okay, in other words, John Ed, get up and walk, right? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> okay, let's get up and walk, and let me show you what we have on the radar. Some scattered rain showers from Dothan, Alabama, all the way down into Tallahassee and Quincy and Chattahoochee. I used to live in that area right there where the, the Chattahoochee River becomes the Appalachian and goes on south down here toward Appalachicola. Rain showers right there. And you know the mental institutions in Chattahoochee, don't you? It is. Let me show you what we have right now. 66 degrees in Grove Hill, 65 in Evergreen, 69 in Milton, 68 currently in Mobile, and 67 in Pascagoula. In Pensacola, we're coming in at 70. It's currently 72 down toward the beach around Destin. Here's where the rain is now. It's working its way through Georgia and up the Carolina coastline. Behind it, we have clearing skies, and by tomorrow morning, we're going to be down in the low 60s around Mobile, 67 in Pensacola, down near 60 in the interior, and some of us, some of us up toward Wayne County and Greene County in Mississippi and up into Choctaw County, we're going to be in the upper 50s in the morning. The high tomorrow, 88 degrees, mostly sunny on Saturday and Sunday. Sunday's high, 94. One degrees, almost said 95, 91 degrees on Sunday, 90 on Monday, and 91 for Tuesday. No rain, though, over the next four days. All right, thank you, John Ed. And don't think we're finished with you just yet. Okay, coming up throughout this newscast, we're going to hear from some of John Ed's current and former co workers, including some blasts from the past. And then the sports guys also have a nice tribute for the man of the hour. And don't miss the very end of the show when John Ed signs off for the very last time. We have a great musical tribute to share with you as well. All of that is yet to come. We hope you'll stay close. We have some developing news for you right now out of Robertsdale. A young man there is behind bars tonight accused of burning his own baby and on purpose. Investigators say it happened at a trailer park just off County Road 38. Fox 2 News reporter Mike Rockwood spoke with investigators and to the baby's mother. This six month old baby is in the hospital tonight with first and second degree burns to 85% of his body. Baldwin County Sheriff's deputies say his own father, 21 year old Michael York, placed him in scalding water. He left the baby for about five minutes in the scalding water. Obviously, the baby was crying at first. The baby became quiet. 
He walked in to look, and at that time, the baby uh, had begun to seize. Investigators say York lied about what happened, but eventually confessed that he burned his baby on purpose. Essentially, that he was going through some personal issues and that he was hurting and he wanted somebody else to be hurting as well. He can burn in hell for all I care. The baby's mother says the six-month-old was taken from South Baldwin Hospital to UAB's Children's Hospital in Birmingham. He's doing good. He's doing real good. He had to have surgery. And they said he looks good and he's, he's doing better than what he was. So that's good. Meanwhile, his father is in jail, and investigators say they're doing everything they can to keep him there. Absolutely. We're going to try to do everything we can to put him away for as long as we can. This is a case where, unfortunately, years in prison do not bring the justice that this man deserves. Reporting in Baldwin County, Mike Rockwood, Fox 10 News. Michael York has been charged with first degree domestic violence. DHR has removed custody of the child from both parents. Richard Hollingsworth will stay behind bars. A judge denied bond for the teenager who is accused of killing a Mobile police officer. Prosecutors say the 18 year old shot Officer Brandon Sigler outside of an apartment complex. The DA's office is pushing for no bond because they consider Hollingsworth as a flight risk. They say he crashed his pickup truck trying to get away just after the shooting. He attempted to hide the murder weapon, then went back, made a decision he needed to take it with him. Um, that and, and he does have significant issues um, with his family as well and has been moved from different homes over the past uh, couple of years. Hollingsworth pleaded not guilty to capital murder. A preliminary hearing is scheduled for July 7th. In meantime, today, the community mourned for the police officer Hollingsworth is accused of shooting. Visitation for Officer Brandon Sigler was held today in Mobile. Very heavy hearts as loved ones and colleagues paid their respects at Bradney Funeral Home. Deputies and fellow officers were there to remember the fallen officer. They wore black bands, as you can see here in this video, over their badges in his honor. And it's very sad when we lose one of our, our fellow officers. It, uh... It's very difficult to describe even. And, uh, the profession is one that's uh, one of honor and integrity. And when you use, lose a young man like this, it's just a very popular young man. And he always had a smile on his face. It, it's extremely difficult. Officer Sigler was only 26. He had planned to marry his longtime sweetheart, and the couple was set to close on a home next week. Well, the funeral for Officer Sigler will be tomorrow at noon inside St. Mary's Church. That's on Old Shell and Lafayette Street. From the church, a funeral procession will lead from Mobile Memorial Gardens to 3 Notch Road. And tomorrow marks the 65th anniversary of the D-Day invasion of Normandy. A local veteran, one of the brave soldiers who helped to turn the tide of World War II. The Gulf Shores man is sharing his D-Day story with you next. That's right here on Fox 10 News. John Ed, this is your last day on the job. Can you believe it's been 32 years for both of us? You know I'm going to miss seeing you here in the building every day, sharing the makeup room with you. But you know what? I've got your number, and I may have to call just to make sure you're enjoying your retirement. Please make it a good one. Bye-bye. Watching Fox 10 News at 9 p.m. President Obama is in France to mark tomorrow's anniversary of the D-Day invasion. President Obama will travel to Normandy tomorrow, meeting with French President Nicolas Sarkozy. They'll commemorate the 65th anniversary of the famed invasion. D-Day, June 6, 1944, was a major turning point in World War II. On that day, 160,000 Allied troops stormed the beaches of Normandy, gaining a major victory over Nazi Germany. And the Gulf Shores resident was one of those brave soldiers who helped to change the course of World War II in Europe. Fox 2 News reporter Carrie Chow looks back on D-Day with a local hero. The soothing sounds of the sea crashing onto the shore 
provided little serenity for members of the U.S. Army's 90th Division as they crashed onto Utah Beach on June 6, 1944. Well, we didn't know what we would be facing when we got there. We knew we were going to war, and we wanted to go ahead and not anxious to go to war, but anxious to, to get it over with and get home. D-Day is the largest seaborne invasion in history. 160,000 Allied troops stormed the beach at Normandy. 88-year-old Andrew Cooper was there for it all. Just thank God that I'm here and so many of my dear friends did not make it. Cooper was just 23 years old at the time, but he always knew he'd be a military man. He still remembers the day he was told he was heading to France. We were glad to know where it was going, where we were going, uh, but uh, it was somewhat of a surprise, but at the same time, we wanted to go ahead and get mission accomplished. Cooper served the country for three years, compiling a fair share of medals and wounds. The Purple Heart recipient was hit with shrapnel as well as shot by a German sniper. I had surgery and remained in the hospital until the latter part of November. I went back to my same outfit, stayed until March, through the Belgian bulge and even on into Germany across through the Siegfried Line. Cooper has lived in Gulf Shores since 1973. He looks back at his military service very fondly. And despite the fact that he hates war, the answer is obvious whether or not he'd do it again. I do not regret not one day of it. I just don't want to go through it again. But if I had to, I would, of course. With that type of attitude 65 years later, it's no wonder General Patton was honored. Reporting from Gulf Shores, Kerry Chow, Fox 10 News. Hank Cooper recalls his reaction to the end of the war. You can hear his reflections by logging onto our website, fox10tv.com, and just click on the D-Day Remembered Story. D-Day would have happened a day earlier, but there were severe thunderstorms along a front coming across the English channels on the 5th of June. That's why it occurred on the 6th. Let's go ahead and look at our beach forecast. Not Normandy, but down at Gulf Shores, Pensacola, and Dolphin Island. High tomorrow, 85. Water temperature, 81, with winds first out of the north and then southwest by the afternoon at 5 to 10 miles per hour. John Ed, you rock. Yeah, we all know you're a great meteorologist. No one knows Gulf Coast weather like you do. But the thing that makes you so wonderful is you are a good man. I don't think I ever told you that in such simple terms when we work together, but I want to thank you for that. You're a good man with a big heart. You always welcomed me. You answered all of my kids 10,000 questions over the 11 years we worked together. And I just couldn't have asked for a better coworker. I want to let you know this. What makes you so very special as a meteorologist is yes, you know Gulf Coast weather. You are a smart, smart man. But we can always tell when we're watching you that you care about us. Whenever the strong hurricanes came through, whenever we all knew we were in danger, we could always count on you to be the calm, steady voice. Yes, you'd let us know when there was danger, but you'd never try to scare us. You'd never play up the fact that we're paying attention to your every word. I thank you for that. We can tell you care, and we want to let you know that we care about you. I'm going to miss you, and I know the Gulf Coast viewers will too. I wish you the absolute best because you deserve it. John Ed, you're simply the best. You've kept us informed when Mother Nature's fury was just around the corner. You've lifted our spirits when things were pretty bleak outside. And you've come into our homes and been a part of our families for over three decades. On behalf of all the people in South Alabama that are part of your extended family, as well as your many friends, thanks for a job well done. And may your forecast include nothing but blue skies and bright sunshine for the years to come. Thanks a million. Well, some very nice words there from Alabama Congressman Joe Bonner. And Bonner also presented this American flag to John Ed. The flag actually flew over the U.S. Capitol in honor of John Ed's retirement. 
Let's go ahead and look at the radar, and I am very pleased at uh, Representative Botter giving me this flag, and it's at the house, and I'm going to put a special, put it in a very special place in the living room there. Here's what we've had throughout the afternoon and evening. Showers pushing right on through southern Alabama and across into Georgia and running right along Interstate 10. 78 degrees, that was high today in Mobile. 83, we made it in Pensacola. The normal high in both cities this time of the year would be 88 degrees. 68 would be your normal low for Mobile. Mobile hit 68 this morning. We hit 69 in Pensacola, and the normal low would be about 71 degrees. Now, looking at the record book in 1985, we set two records. It was 97 in Pensacola, 99 degrees in Mobile. In 1946, we set record lows of 58 in Mobile and 61 degrees in Pensacola. Right now, well, we're down to 63 degrees up here in Thomasville, 65 in Evergreen, 68 in Mobile, 67 for Pascagoula. Milton has 69. It's 70 in Pensacola and Crestview and 72 right now down in Destin. The high temperature was 83 at Brooklyn, 83 at the airport in Pensacola and also over toward Crestview, 78 at Mobile's airport, 79 down in Pascagoula. Check out that 87 degree reading we had down at NAS today and 77 was the high for the day up in Connecticut County. In the morning, we're going to hit about 63 in Mobile, 67 in Pensacola, and some areas inland across Mississippi and Alabama will be actually in the upper 50s tonight. You're looking, of course, at our radar picture with clouds added, and you can always go to our website and check out what's happening there, fox10tv.com. That is where you'll find it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And here's what's going on. A cool front running through the Carolinas down to an area of low pressure in Georgia. That's going to push further to the east tonight, and behind it, we've got high pressure, and that high pressure is going to bring drier air into our picture tomorrow. It's going to be basically dry with a few clouds kind of in a wash around, a backwash fashion, and as this system finally pushes across northern Florida, even Pensacola and Destin will start to clear as well. Clearing and milder tonight, 61 in the low inland, 69 at the coast, and north winds tonight becoming northeast early tomorrow, southwest by the end of the day, light winds for the most part throughout the day as that high pressure kind of settles on top of us. It's going to be mostly sunny and warm. Highs tomorrow, 81 to 83. No rain tomorrow, no rain on Sunday. A high of 88 Saturday, 91 Sunday. Looks like great weather all the way through Tuesday. And by the way, that tall ship is right there at dock in Pensacola for the weekend. That's right. You should go check it out. Nice weather for it, too. Well, still ahead tonight, a man dies after a high-speed chase leads to a crash in Pensacola. We'll be right back. I would just like to thank everybody uh, for, the, for the honor and uh, come the 5th of June. Hopefully no storms between now and then. And I will hang it up and start hanging curtains and everything else my wife wants me to do. A man dies after leading Escambia County deputies on a high-speed chase. Investigators say John Breed was driving a stolen truck. When a deputy tried to pull him over, he hit the gas and did a U-turn heading right towards the deputy. The deputies lost it for a minute, and then the vehicle came back out, I guess, hit a stop sign, ran it over, turned around, started coming back out right at the lead deputy, causing him to have to go into the ditch. Um, you know, they believe he was aiming for him, trying to, you know, get him off him. Well, another deputy saw the truck on Border Street and got behind him, but eventually crashed into a tree. He died at the hospital. Well, we are just a week away, if you can believe that, from the switch to all digital television. The transition date is next Friday. That's June 12th. You will need a converter box or a new TV, a subscription to cable or satellite TV to keep getting a picture. And if you need help connecting your converter box, well, representatives from the FCC will be in Pensacola, Mobile, and Baldwin County next week. They're going to be in Pensacola on Tuesday. To see the complete list, log on to our website. That's fox10tv.com and click on local news. We'll be right back. I just wanted to wish you a very happy retirement and a happy rest of your life. It's been 16 years since I had the pleasure of meeting you and working with you here on the set back in the morning days when we were doing the uh, news and the weather back at that time. It's truly been a pleasure. Wish you a lot of great times ahead in your life. And of course, uh, give it your best, give it your all, and may God's best be yours. Oh, that was sweet. 
Well, you know, thousands of people across the Gulf Coast tune into Fox 10 every day to see their favorite weatherman, John Thompson. And that also is the case at a particular mobile barber shop. Fox 10 News reporter Chastity Bird is taking you there. Haircuts, conversation, and John Ed. He's part of family now. Just part of the day at Exclusive, the largest barber shop in Alabama. There are 25 barbers on the job, and every one of them considered John Ed their friend. We just like the way he speaks about the weather. Yeah, we've been with him. He's been with us a long time, so we just used to him. Throughout the day, the TVs here may go through many channels, but you can bet once it becomes 5 o'clock, they'll be on Fox 10, even if the shop is full. Actually, we watch the news. We shut it down for about 20 minutes, and we all, everybody's watching Fox 10. And even though we don't have time for everyone to say goodbye, here are a few. Johnny, I hope you have a wonderful time when you leave Fox 10 News. Uh, tell them um, have um, a good retirement, and uh, he did well on um, news. Uh, John Ed, uh, all I can say is we enjoyed you over the years. Uh, have a nice retirement. There was even a message for the new chief, Jason Smith. I was like, um, ask Jason to take me fishing with him one day. I never seen him on the boat with anybody else besides the cameraman. And even though the scissors and razors will continue on after today, it's good to know, John Ed, you always have a place to go and people that would gladly cut your hair. Reporting from Mobile, Chastity Bird, Fox 10 News. And for the rest of this newscast, with the exception of sports, it's going to be all about John Ed. Our chief meteorologist is retiring today, and we want to send him off in style. We hope you'll stay with us. Happy retirement. I want to say congratulations, but I also have to say that I'm kind of sad. We're really going to miss seeing you around here, but I know we'll see you again soon out on the golf course or wherever. Hope you have a great retirement, and I have absolutely loved working with you. Your positive energy and all of your positive and encouraging words. We are going to miss you. Happy retirement. John Ed, what are we going to do without you? You and I, we've been through so many hurricanes together at Channel 10, through so many Greater Gulf State Fairs and rodeos and all those fun things. But you really deserve taking a break. And I have to say that when there's a hurricane, if there's a hurricane, I'm going to be calling you. And you can tell me when I should leave town, okay? You have a great time. You do deserve this. Wow. Well, we have heard from hundreds of you about John Ed's retirement. All of the interviews and email basically say the same thing. John Ed, you are going to be missed. And one of those interviews really stood out. It came from a woman in Pensacola who just missed John Ed at the end of one of his farewell forecasts. She was disappointed that she didn't get to tell John Ed goodbye in person, but she wasn't too shy about summing up her feelings on our cameras. Johnny, I love you. You do you. You're just a child. My son is 62. And you're just a child. Go back to work. <laughs> Go back to work. I love that. All right, classic video there. And uh, since John Ed is not coming back to work, we had to find a replacement. And lucky for us, we didn't have to look too far. Jason Smith, he's been forecasting the weather here at Fox 10 for about 10 years now. He will take over on Monday as our new chief meteorologist. Jason could not be here tonight, but he left this message. Well, John Ed, things won't be the same here in the Fox 10 News Storm Tracker Center. We're going to miss you. I hope you have a great retirement. Enjoy having some of that free time and get out there on the golf course, get some things done around the house, and at the same time, just enjoy not having to be a part of the daily grind. And we'll miss you here, especially during hurricane season. That's one of the times where uh, we saw a lot of each other over the years. I really appreciate everything you've done to help me along in my career and wish you the best. I guess since Jason's left a message, I'm going to leave a message for him. Okay. Jason, I only did this once on TV, but they recorded it. <laughs> I know what he's going to yeah, do. Yeah, and okay. Jason, you've got to learn to do it like this. It's how, how, how. That's the way you do it. You don't do how, how, how. You do how, how, how. Oh, boy. That's the way you do it. It's, <laughs> and you have to explain where it's, that's it's from. It's ZZ Top. Yes. How, how, how. Okay. <laughs> I only did it once on Tv, but we've That's seen it a hundred times. That's going to end up on YouTube. 
<laughs> I'm going to come back and give you some more weather in just a little bit. All right. Sounds good. Stay with us. <laughs> Today is the last day, Johnette. The last time you're going to give a forecast on Channel 10. I can't tell you how fast uh, time has gone by here. We just announced a month ago that you were getting ready to retire, and boom, today's the day. I know that you have been looking forward to this day, but I got to tell you, you are going to be thoroughly missed. And I know that you've heard that a lot, but know that it comes straight from my heart. I can remember when I had that first audition here at Channel 10 about a year ago and I first met you and Bob, I walked away thinking I have got to be the luckiest girl in the world right now. I've got two great guys who are deeply rooted in the community. They know their stuff. I've been so fortunate to work with both of you. And I guess I'm just trying to say that it's not going to be the same without that third missing piece to the puzzle. But again, I know that you have been looking forward to this retirement, and I certainly want you to enjoy it. But I also hope that you will take time to remember your Fox 10 News family and try not to be a stranger. Happy retirement, John Ed. Our John Ed farewell continues, and of course, our sports department had to get into the mix. Here's our Joe Emer and Rob Lee Hockey with a special goodbye that features a few special guests as well. Hey, John Ed. Well, this is it, your very last show, so Rob and I thought we'd say goodbye from one of your favorite spots, a golf course. Yeah, hopefully he'll play a lot now that he's retired, and hopefully he'll get better. Oh, you know, he needs to get better, yeah, that's for does, sure. Definitely. John Ed, you took me to my first golf tournament here in Mobile. It was the Deep Sea Fishing Rodeo. You spent more time eating oysters than you did actually playing golf. It's been great working with you the last few years for Joe and I. You've been a, a big ambassador of our sports department. We appreciate that. You know, we're still going to use your name now that you're retired. Remember in New Orleans at the Sugar Bowl? Tickets. Tickets. I got tickets for sale. How much you asking for these tickets? How much? 200. 200. 200 each? 200 each. How about I give you 10 each and this? Done deal. Man, I just worked that guy over. Show his face and it works like magic. Well, speaking of which, John Ed, we've got a few more people who want to say goodbye to you. Hey, John Ed, you know, I'm 46 year old, years old right now, and uh, I've been watching you on the news ever since I was in diapers so on Fairway Drive, and so I want to wish you a happy retirement. Mr. John Ed Thompson, this is NASCAR driver Rick Crawford from Mobile. Thanks for everything you've done for the Gulf Coast community, not only the weather, but the trust and integrity you've brought through your communication. Thanks for everything you've done. You'll be greatly missed. Wish you the best. John Ed, Jake Peavy here. Can remember watching you over the, the many years that uh, I grew up there in Mobile. Remember checking the forecast before big ball games, seeing uh, what the forecast looked like. So just want to say congratulations on retirement. Uh, well earned, well deserved, and we're certainly going to miss you. How about that? Jake Peavy saying goodbye, John Ed. Uh, maybe now that you're retired, he can uh, go catch some baseball games. I bet John Ed could maybe even get a hit off him. I almost did. Oh, well, be glad you retired. You're not going <laughs> to hear that story from Joe anymore. John Ed, we love you. Best of luck in retirement. Congratulations, and we'll, we'll be seeing you out on the golf course. That's for sure. Take care, buddy. How about that? Jake Peavy? Joey Jones, by the way, Joey, I can write football lyrics to look at them Jaguars. And Jerry Powell and I will get together and we're going to say, look at them Jaguars passing. Anyway, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Joey, it's coming at you. Here's what we've got coming at Savannah, Georgia. We've got rain going that away, but clearing skies behind it. Matter of fact, it's clear all along Interstate 10 between Pensacola and Tallahassee. Back to our west, we've got not snow, but rain flying here in the Rockies and Rain up and down the east coast all the way from New York down to Savannah. The heat is still out here in Texas. It's still at this hour, 93 degrees there on the border. We're at 44 degrees up in International Falls, Minnesota, and it's 54 up in Boston. Around the southeast, it's 67 in Greensboro, 63 in Richmond, 68 degrees in Birmingham and in Mobile, and in Tallahassee, it's 73 degrees. So we've got the rain exiting off to the east, and we have a few clouds back to the west, but for a couple of days, we're looking at mostly clear skies. Clearing and milder. That is the forecast tonight. 61 the low inland, 69 at the coast. North winds 5 to 10. Highs tomorrow in the low 80s. It'll be mostly sunny with northeast winds first, southwest winds in the afternoon. And here's a look at the next seven days. 
Hey, you just heard Rick Crawford saying goodbye to John Ed. Well, he's racing right now and doing quite well. An update coming up. Plus, Kale Gale is in Nashville for his first nationwide race of the year. Fox 10 Sports is next. Mobile's Rick Crawford has finished in the top 10 in the truck series three years in a row, but right now Crawford sits just outside the top 10 in 13th. Hoping to gain some ground tonight in Texas, you can see here with an early move from 10th to 9th on the 9th lap. Then with 63 to go, he rolls the dice and it pays off, doesn't pit, and he moves into first place. Right now, last we checked, lap 15, Crawford in fourth. To another Mobile NASCAR driver, it's been seven months since Kale Gale hopped in the driver's seat despite a solid rookie year. Well, that will all change tomorrow night as Gale looks to make his mark in NASCAR. Nashville. Last August at Bristol, Kale Gale took the pole and finished fourth overall. Despite three top ten finishes last year, Kale has yet to step in a nationwide car this season, partially due to the economy. There was a few of us, you know, that, that kind of got uh, just shuffled out of the mix a little bit and because of the way the sponsors turned out and sponsors won't cup racers and all that stuff. But uh, fortunately enough, I have a race scheduled for this weekend at Nashville. Kale says there is some pressure with Nashville perhaps being his only nationwide race of the season, but he's also very confident. Hopefully uh, we can go out there and, and run good and, and see if we can't reopen up some eyes and see if, uh, see if some sponsors don't... Uh, start ringing the phones and, and maybe something will happen. After the race, Kale heads up north to drive six races on NASCAR's Canadian circuit. He hopes with tomorrow's race in Nashville and with the Canadian opportunity, he can prove to sponsors he belongs in a race car. Time flies in racing, uh, so you got to you gotta make the, the best of your opportunities when you get them. And obviously, uh, I have came from Mobile, Alabama, and I got here for a reason, and I just don't want people to forget that. Good luck to Kale tomorrow night, but tonight is John Ed's night. That's mm. right, and we'll be back. John Ed is going to say goodbye after the break. Let's look at the computer and see what's going on weather-wise. The weather is over to our east in Georgia and South Carolina. Cooler temperatures are coming in in the morning. It will be a very low humidity day tomorrow, high of 88 degrees on Sunday 91. No rain this weekend. Well, John Ed, I am going to miss you. Okay, I'll miss you too. <laughs> Are you laughing at me? What do you want to say? This is, this okay, is your I thing I'd now. like to thank everybody that came out on our farewell forecast. I, I really don't think I deserved all of this, but I will accept it. And I'm hoping that you enjoyed the farewell forecast as I did in Fairhope at Lulu's and Pensacola Beach and in downtown Mobile. Jason will be in charge come Monday morning, Monday, actually Monday afternoon, won't it be? So Jason's going to be in charge Monday afternoon starting about 145 right now. I believe Jason is celebrating a wedding with one of his in-laws. One thing I'd like to say, I have been offered an honorary teaching job in Los oh. Angeles at an acting school. It's the Stanislavski School, <laughs> and they're going to just branch out not only in acting, but in music. Mm -hmm. and singing and it'll be my job to make them feel at home in front of the camera. It's not a full-time thing but I will be out there part of the year. So you've decided you're gonna go. I, it's been offered and I have accepted. Okay. Cool. Congratulations. That didn't take long. No. You told me you're gonna work on your music. I will work on my music while I'm teaching people how to <laughs> sit in front of the camera. <laughs> All right John Ed. Well enjoy it. Okay. Good morning, John Ed Thompson here. 25 after 7, it's going to be hot again today. It's the sun is coming through and we have warmed up now. It's been going good, Wayne, here on the coastline, but all over Alabama tonight. Rain and thunder showers moved across the southeast last night and this morning. Watched him get a little thicker in the middle. Watched him get a little thinner up on top. Our Final system pushing into our area to the Midwest this morning, and it caused all of that rain today. And as you see, it's a very slow moving frontal system. John Ed, don't you know we hate to see you go? No one can take your place. It will never be the same. 2005, and we're dealing with Katrina right now. It's about 195 miles to the south southwest of Dauphin Island. Sustained winds are still up there. You gave us hope when the hurricanes were blowing. Comfort through the roughest storms we had. So ride off into the sunset with a 
this tribute from us all. Good luck, John, at your mobiles, weatherman. You're one of a kind. Uh, you've talked us through so many weather storms, hurricanes, and uh, you've been a, a, a stabilizing voice in our life. Thank you very and much. And you're going to be sorely missed. Thank you. Appreciate it. It will never be the same. These wave heights indicate right here. Let's go over here to south of Biloxi and Gulfport and find out what they have. They only have 15-foot wave heights. Coming back down to the southern part of Mobile Bay, the wave heights there are at 20 feet right now, continuing out 25 feet and continuing to move toward the eye of the storm. We're working up to 35-foot wave heights, working our way from south of Biloxi and over here, 50-foot wave heights, and then right there at 55. Now, does that mean the eye is right there? No, it does not mean the eye is right there. The eye is right there.